Welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's episode is episode number 523. Today, we are welcoming Professor Paul Sharp, a researcher at King's College in London, England, to talk about healing cavities with Redent, a material that stim- stimulates decay decay teeth to repair themselves. My producer is going to get him on the phone here in a second. Before we get started, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. All past episodes complete with video are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. And we're not going to be streaming live on Facebook today because I couldn't figure it out. Maybe next week. All right. So, yeah, let's get uh, Professor Sharp on the phone. Hello. Hey, Professor, how are you? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Good. Okay, so I want to ask you first, what gave you the idea to try an Alzheimer drug to recalcify teeth? I mean, why not peanut butter? <laughs> <You know? laughs> so the Alzheimer drug that we use, which is called Tidiglutib, is one of a number of drugs that all act in a similar way, and they work by stimulating a well-known cell signaling pathway. Okay. And this cell signaling pathway we'd identified is actually activated when a tooth gets damaged. And what it seems to do, among other things, is to stimulate the resonant stem cells that are present in the tooth pulp. And that stimulation causes the stem cells to multiply and to differentiate into very specialized cells called odontoblasts, which are the cells that make dentine. Right. So this naturally occurs in the tooth when you get small damage, cracks and fissures. But we reason that by adding a drug that will enhance the pathway, we can overactivate the pathway and get more repair. Interesting. Wow. So how long ago did you start this research? So we probably started it quite a number of years ago because the first thing we had to do was to identify the pathway and work out what it does and everything. That was a a piece of basic research. And then in the last couple of years, we've been experimenting with different ways of delivering this drug and other drugs into the tooth so that it will, one, stimulate a complete natural repair of the tooth, and at the same time be usable by um, a general high street dentist. Oh, you guys call it a high street dentist, and I think we would refer to it as a main street dentist. Yes, yes. But that's kind of cool, because I actually practice on high street. Interesting. So you said other drugs, so you've tried other drugs as well. We've tried other drugs that look in a similar way. The reason that we focused mainly on the... Alzheimer's drug, Tidiglucid, was that having been used in clinical trials with patients, it's one of the few drugs of this kind that has actually been used in patients. So it's known to be safe, and it's known to be safe using much higher concentrations than we use, and also when delivered systemically into the bloodstream. We use very low concentrations, and we give it locally into the tooth. Okay. So how do you see this translating to a clinical setting? So, for example, I'm a dentist. I've been a dentist for about 38 years. And I know that, first of all, if you're putting a collagen sponge that's been soaked into the glucid down into the tooth, it has to be far enough down that it's not going to be in the way of the occlusion, the bite. It also has to be protected from saliva, I would assume. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So with the drug delivered on the collagen sponge, we've done mice and we've done rats so far. With rats, we can make a much bigger hole because they have bigger teeth. So basically, the way we did those is we cut the sponge to essentially the size of the hole. Okay. So it just pushes down and just sits on top of the the foot tissue. And then the sponge is large enough so that all we have to do is cover it with, we use a glass ionomer, but you can use any other kind of material. And that works, and it works really well. We are acutely aware that making sponges or cutting sponges 
or even putting sponges inside a tooth is not something a dentist is used to doing. So what we've been working on more recently is an injectable system. Oh. So this is a delivery method where we have a gel, the drug inside, the gel is injected, it fills the tooth up, and then it's UV light cured for a couple of minutes. Oh, okay. You're smiling because I'm guessing you're familiar with that kind of, kind of approach, being a dentist. Yeah, I, I knew that <laughs> um, you know, we can't repair enamel. This is just dentin. So I knew there had to be a way of keeping it in, keeping it protected. And then the next question is, so six weeks later, the dentin has all regenerated. So at that point, then, the dentist would have to put a thin filling over top of that, which would simulate the enamel, correct? Yes, yes. I mean, we, we use, routinely use glass ionomer because it's convenient for us. But you, you could use anything, any standard material that just then sits on top of the gel. Both the gel and the sponges are biodegradable, so they disappear. So all you have left is dentine with the covering of whatever you put on top to replace the enamel. Wow, so now does it grow back to its original configuration? The dentine just seems to grow back pretty much to fill the space where the dentine was there before, basically. Okay, so it does. So if uh, let's say there's yeah. a relatively bombed out tooth, as you've seen many, I'm sure. Would I need to put some kind of a mold around that tooth so the dentin would have a structure or a matrix to grow to? No, no, it just grows back wherever wherever it was before, it grows back, basically. Wow. So even if the outside edge, say a mesiobuccal cusp, the outside corner had been affected, as long as the enamel was still there, it would grow? Yes, yeah. If the as far as we can tell. If the enamel's gone, though, it won't grow. I mean, all we're replacing is dentine. Right. Basically. Mm -hmm. We can't replace enamel because there's currently no way of doing that. So, and as you know, dentine is the bulk mineralized tissue of the tooth. So right. we figure that by replacing that dentine with normal dentine, we are really just enhancing a natural repair. The advantage, of course, is that it's the natural material. There's no adhesives. The new dentine just integrates with the old dentine. So you don't have any adhesives. You don't have any inorganic cements in there. All you've got left is your essentially your enamel equivalent material, whatever that may be. Wow, that's really special. That's pretty neat. I didn't even know this would ever be possible, which is uh, why I think this is so cool that we're getting to talk. Now, is there any side effect of swallowing small amounts of tiniglucid? We haven't observed any in animals. Okay. Uh, as I say, the drug has been used in much higher concentrations with repeated doses into patients into the bloodstream and the safety seems to be fine with that drug. There were no major adverse effects. As I say, we are using much lower concentration, very small concentrations delivered locally. And as I say, in in the animals, we've not seen any general effects and we've not seen any local effects. Awesome. Obviously, everybody wants to know that. And like you said in an interview I read, you're so far ahead of the game because this drug has already been tested and shown to be safe in humans. How many years will that cut off the time that it may take to bring this to market, so to speak? Well, well in theory, you never know until you actually have the the, the, sit down with the people concerned who, who are, uh, are going to approve this for clinical trials. But initial conversations, clearly, if you have a drug that has been proven to be safe in patients and you're using it in, in a similar way or you're using it in a way that is very likely to be even less harmful, then you can save a lot of time testing the drug. We don't yet know whether what we develop for patients and i.e. what clinical trial we do will involve this particular drug. We are testing a number of other drugs. Oh, okay. um, and we don't, they all work in a similar way, but we don't yet know whether the drug we use will be tinnitusive or whether it will be a modification of this particular drug. Oh, okay. If it is, and it hasn't then been in patients, then we will have to start having the relevant conversations with the people, uh, the, the licensing authorities. Okay. So we're talking about relatively big cavities because there's already a hole there to place the sponges, correct? Yes. Yeah. Now, if there was a small one, I guess a dentist could take a dental drill and maybe make a little bit of an access opening so you could put a you could put the sponge in there and heal a small one, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's just the same. Yeah. Okay. Or, and, of course, if, it, if it's a gel, then the size doesn't matter. You're essentially just injecting whatever you need to, f to fill the hole. Okay, now I was thinking about the early cavities, the incipient ones, the ones interproximally, you know, between the teeth. You can't get to those because you can't put the sponge on the actual dentin. But could you use it in the form of, say, like a whitening tray where this gel is put into a tray and the teeth are soaked from the outside? Would that do any good? I, I don't know is the answer. I know okay. I hate to say 
say yes or no to that question because it's not something we try. Okay. Well, that might be an idea to give a shot because you know how you put... It's got to try, so... Yeah. You know, you put a drop of water between two glass slabs and it spreads out through capillary action. And so our whitening trays would do the same thing. So when we put fluoride gel or we put a whitening solution in a tray like that that's perfectly mated to the shape of the teeth, you know, and uh, yeah. people put it in... Yeah. So it just feels to me like if you had a solution that could go in the mouth and people would give themselves home treatments, then you might be able to make these little tiny cavities that are in between the teeth even go away. That would be awesome. Yeah, I think that's something we need, need to think about. Do you think there'll ever be a time when we can regrow enamel? Well, as a scientist, I, I always hate, hate to say no, there never will be, because, of course, it's, anything's possible, at least in the lab. I think until you can make the ameloblast and a functional secreting ameloblast, which is a cell that lays down enamel, then it's going to be virtually impossible, I think. Right. The problem with ameloblasts mm -hmm. is they're incredibly unique cells. They're epithelial cells, and you need sheets of them to make enamel. So I don't think anybody's come anywhere near making something they would call a functional ameloblast. Okay. Th that doesn't mean to say that in the next 10, 20 years that that won't happen because, you know, um, science moves very quickly. And there is work now where people are making cells, making cell membranes. So it's going to be very difficult, put it that way, but I, I would never say it's impossible. Because enamel is mostly mineral rather than organic components is probably... It's mineral and, and it's a highly structured mineral. The way that the, 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 the ameloblasts control the way that the mineral forms and it's done in, in a unique way. There's nothing else like it in the body. Right. The cells that make dentine and the cells <coughs> that make very similar cells. The cells that make enamel are an epithelial origin, as I say, highly structured, highly unique. So it's a major challenge to make those cells. And if you can make them, how do you apply them so that they will sit on the surface of a tooth and make enamel where you want it made? So there are huge challenges. Right, especially this, the proper shape and all that. Yeah. Yes. Okay, we're going to do Dr. Kavitko's question of the day right now. I forgot to tell folks that we do this. It's 614-459-9769. Uh, what we're going to do is there's a little disclaimer we're going to play first. I just want to clarify, this drug is spelled T-I-D-E-G-L-U-S-I-B. Tide glucib is how I would have said it, but in England they say everything literally, so they say aluminum, aluminium. And he says, Tiddy Glucid. So anyway, all right, before we do the contest, we'd like you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household. Prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kavitko's Question of the Day. All right, we are talking with King's College of London researcher, Professor Paul Sharp. He's developed a product that will allow dentists to fill teeth with what? A, silver filling, B, tooth-colored filling, C, peanut butter, or D, to fill the teeth with teeth, meaning reparative dentin. All right, the winner's going to receive free floral arrangement from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. The number to call is 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. You won't believe it, though. I want to hear your mind. And there's nothing else in the world. Hi, I'm Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. Look for my smile on the big screen this summer, courtesy of Dr. Kavitko. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile radio and roadshow. Did you know that you no longer need to visit several different dental professionals to get more complete dental care? We handle everything from cleanings and orthodontics to restoration, implants, and smile makeovers, all in my office. And now we have two locations. Get the most advanced technology and procedures available today. It's more complete dentistry. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko.
Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. back we have callers on the line we have Sarah Linda Steve and Tammy and let's go with uh, line one which was Sarah hey Sarah how are you today hi Dr. Kavikko how are you I'm awesome and you good good so what is the answer to Dr. Kavikko's question of the day today D D that's right we he's gonna we're gonna fill teeth with teeth with Denton right <laughs> yeah isn't that cool yeah that is pretty cool actually <laughs> all right well hey thanks for listening thanks for calling in and all the others that called in please try next week all right so we're going to go back to uh, talking to Professor Paul Sharp, a researcher at the King's College in London, England, to talk about healing cavities with redent, a material that stimulates decayed teeth to repair themselves. So now, how many more years do you think before you've, you're comfortable with what you have and you feel like you would be able to submit for approval of the licensing agencies? We would hope to be in that position at the earliest at the end of this year. Really? Yeah. At least in a position where we can sit down and design what, what the clinical trial would look like. Okay. The, knowing the drug concentration, knowing the delivery method, and then sitting down and working out what type of patients would be the most appropriate for the first tests, and then getting that approved both ethically and by the relevant government bodies. Okay. Now, whenever something new like this comes out, it seems like the first places we hear about it are, are tabloid-type media. <laughs> And they always, yeah. they always glorify, the title of the article is always something like, dentists will be a thing of the past, or no more dental drills, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's not what we're talking about here, is it? Absolutely not, no, and you're, you, you're absolutely correct. I mean, most of the press, it's all about a headline, basically. Mm -hmm. And the problem is that a, a, lot, of, a lot of people <laughs> don't be beyond the headline, even if what they write after that is accurate. So, <laughs> right, right. Of course, with any dental treatment, you are, you're going to need clinicians, dentists that can deliver it, whether whatever that's based on, whether it's a pharmaceutical, whether it's a cell-based treatment, whatever. So dentists are not going to go away. They're just going to have to learn more. If you well, if you t if you think about something like implants, when implants came in, right, it, it, it's it's led to a, a whole new dental field basically and this would be the same you know dentists would learn how to deliver this stuff just like they, they learned how to put implants in and then it would become regular clinical practice yeah i agree now you mentioned that you're using glass ionomer for your restorations right now and i'm sure you know glass ionomer has fluoride in it and actually will create a barrier of uh, like limits the decay that can occur because it leaches fluoride into the tooth so i can envision tidiglucid or whatever the name of the final version that you determine could be incorporated into the dental restorations couldn't it uh the drug it's very small amounts and disappears really quickly. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the drug only works within the first 24 hours. Okay. And then disappears the bloodstream. So how often then would a dentist need to reapply this over the six-week period it takes to heal? Just once. Just once? Really? Just so once, it just yes. stimulates the, the stem cells once and then they just grow until they know that the original configuration yeah, has been that, reached? That's, that's, that's it, yes, yeah. So it's just switching them on. Wow. I'm letting them do that. Do you think this method of growing dentin for patients is going to wind up being more expensive than getting a traditional filling, at least at the beginning? I don't think, I think it's going to be fairly cost competitive. I mean, that's the whole aim of doing this in this way. There, there are other ways we can stimulate this pathway and, and achieve the same thing. But the beauty of using small molecule drugs is that they are easy to make. They can be made in large quantities. And if we can deliver them on something as simple as a sponge or a gel, then that's already established technology. So the aim is to make it uh, cost competitive with what's currently out there. So okay. No, that's awesome. That's it, great. It won't be any more expensive. Because a lot of times, whenever something new comes out, and implants is a good example of that, the implants cost more than it would have cost to have a traditional bridge or a partial. Yeah. Yeah. And I've had patients say, well, I'm just going to wait until you can regrow teeth. I usually say to them, well, usually the latest and greatest piece of technology that helps us in medicine is the most expensive one. But it's sounding it's not going to be like that for you. Well, that's true. I, I mean, it may be because obviously, you know, the, the reason that the cost of implants went down because there was many more companies making them. There's mass production. These companies are competing with each other, which you obviously don't get at the start of something. So it may well be, you know, a little bit more expensive, but that certainly didn't hold implants back. No, uh, no. And uh, I think this is 
going to be the same. You know, the manufacturing of these drugs is is pretty straightforward. And if and when it gets taken up by a suitable large dental company that will be in a position to make and package and distribute this, then I think that's the time that the price will achieve a level which will be affordable. Oh, this is exciting. Hey, do you think there's a chance it could ever be uh, incorporated into, say, toothpaste to prevent cavities? Speaking of large dental companies. No. No? It's not offensive. Okay, it's, it has to be in direct contact. Not something that works as a presenter. It has yeah. to be in direct contact yeah. with the dentin, or with the pulp tissue, basically. With the pulp, exactly. Okay, so that means it may not work using those trays I was describing because it would it would only be I touching. Think, yeah, thinking about it, I think that's unlikely. Okay. But it has to be in contact with the stem cells. The drug has to be able to make contact with the stem cells in the pulp in order to activate them. Okay, okay. Well, that's good to know. So now, seems like your method will work as long as there's some vitality to the pulp. The pulp has to have some live tissue. It does, does, absolutely. And so, seems like the findings may do more to prevent the need for root canals endodontics than it would to prevent fillings. Would that be a safe assumption? Yeah, so certainly with the root canal where you are, the first challenge is to sterilize and remove the decaying pulp cells. If those cells can be replaced with cells, then it's possible that the, this technique will work. And there are trials being done now in, in endodontics to fill the, the root with pulp cells, basically. So you restore the pulp with cells rather than with um, a cement. So if the cell's there, then in theory, it may, it may well work. Okay, so, but at the moment at least, right now, the pulp can't be exposed for your method. The pulp is exposed. We use exposed pulp. Oh, so I'm thinking in a human, so though, the, by the time they come to us with an exposed pulp, if it happened uh, three weeks ago or four months ago, there's all, it's dead and, and there's, a, there's an abscess okay, in there. sorry. Sorry, yeah, I misunderstood. Yeah, so exactly. So it, it, it won't work in that situation. Okay. It works where the pulp is exposed by the, by the dentist, basically. Okay, so there are a couple things. One is, okay, you have deep decay, but the pulp tissue is still there, live and vital. Yes. But then there's one where we have what we call like a pinpoint exposure. Would this work for a pinpoint exposure where it's still yeah. alive? Okay, but it won't work if the pulp is dead. Correct. Yes. Okay. Can't make that grow back. That's unfortunate, but I guess we can't. Well, we can't, but other people are making it grow back. <coughs> other people are working. But there are, there are some groups, there's certainly a group in Japan, who've already tried this on patients. Really? Yeah. Wow. Well, that's really neat to know. So we can we can prevent a need for a root canal. That's one thing. We figured out we can't put it in toothpaste. So you see this as a new wave of rather than people, quote, getting fillings in their teeth, they're going to get teeth in their teeth. <laughs> right? <laughs> Well, the nearest analogy I can, can think of is if you, you know, if you have a road and there's a, there's a pothole in the road, a big hole in the road, then uh, people come along and they will put a patch on it. And we all know that those patches don't last very long. The material, the tarmac that's put in the road, in the patch, starts to come out. We have a bit of ice, so you have some rain. It washes out very easily. What we're doing is essentially replacing the whole road surface with the natural material. That's the, the nearest I can think of. Okay, yeah. And I had a dentist, a friend of mine, ask me if this new dentin, this newly grown dentin, reparative dentin, is it just as good as the original? Um, it's more disorganized. Okay, a little less dense. So it's, it's reparative dentine, which is not as nicely organized as normal dentine or reactionary dentine, because it's actually made very quick. So it doesn't have the nice regular tubular structure. But in all other respects, as far as we can tell, it's nice looking. It's got a, it, it looks like normal reparative dentine. It's okay. just that we make more with the drug. Okay, so it potentially would decay easier the second time if somebody didn't take care of their mouth? Uh, it would decay just the same as normal dentine would. Okay, just normal? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we're really putting the tooth right back into the condition that it was, minus the fact that we yes. have to put a little filling yeah. over it. Yeah, as far as we can tell. I mean, the dentine isn't normal, but it's as close as you can get, and it's, it's, it's equivalent to reparative dentine, okay. which is made normal. Right. You can take me as I am Die just a little bit This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su estación favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Reigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. 
Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, General Dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? We're back. If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is The Reasons We Smile, episode number 523. Today we're speaking with Professor Paul Sharp, a researcher at King's College in London, England, to talk about healing cavities with Redent, a material that stimulates decayed teeth to repair themselves by stimulating the stem cells. This is really cool stuff, folks. And so uh, let's go back to Dr. Um, Professor Sharp. Can we use this in children's teeth? As far as we can tell, yes. Yeah. Shouldn't be any reason why not. So maybe a few less chrome crowns out there, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm going to say people are going to pick up on the notion that maybe they don't need to be numb for this. Have a needle, have a shot. Uh, so the, the dentist, the procedure, the dentist will still need to use a dental burr to remove all the, the caries. Okay. Okay. So we have to get down to the, some healthy dentin. Yeah. So it's exactly. like, like getting a filling except we're not placing a artificial substance in there. So we do everything we would do for a filling except fill it. We let the body exactly. fill it up. That, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Okay, so if you needed to be numb for a filling, you're going to need to be numb for this. Yes. Okay. Well, it's getting clearer and clearer. As a dentist, I'm trying to figure out how am I going to use this someday and how will my patients be using it. And this is very, very exciting. So I really appreciate you being on the show and talking with me. This is awesome. No, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to talk to a, a, a dentist doing a radio show. <laughs> yeah, there aren't many of you us. Know, <laughs> Somebody that knows what they're talking about more than most of your interviewers probably, right? Exactly. Yes. They're, they're all keyed in on, am I going to get a shot? <laughs> yeah. No more dentists? But uh, yeah, this is really cool. And so front teeth, back teeth, it really doesn't matter. For wherever the decay is, you should be able to That's put right. these little collagen sponges in there. And, and, and are using, it's six weeks. So we have the regular collagen that we use for bone grafting. And then we have the six-month collagen for when we're doing, say, sinus lifting. Do you have to use the longer-acting collagen, the six-month, or are you just using regular? The only collagen we've used is marine collagen. Marine collagen. Uh, yeah, it's marine collagen. And that was the first one we tried because we got some free samples from a company just at a conference. He said, do you want to have a go with these? And it worked first time. Wow. So, and it's, that's already, you can buy that off the shelf. You can buy it off the shelf? Yes. So that's why we stuck with that. But as I say, we are developing a gel now. Okay. It will work. Cool. And then I'm still going to have to put a crown on a tooth after you've repaired the dent or repaired the dent with your, your method if it's broken down right so we'll still need yeah. those yes okay very cool very cool boy i hope we can talk again i hope that uh when you do get your clinical trials going maybe we could do another interview or something and kind of catch up on how that's going yeah i hope so i mean uh, as i say we're confident uh, that this is is going to make it to clinical trials because above all it's simple if you want to get things into the clinic the simpler the better basically right you have to pretty much start with procedures we're all used to doing and then just modify it a little bit yeah and something that's not going to to be ridiculously expensive so that people are going to be able to afford it. Oh, what's it going to be called? Redent. Redent. How would you spell that? Redent. R-E-D-E-N-T. Oh, redent. Like re oh, reinventing, uh, remaking dentin. Making dentin, yeah. Redent. I thought it was going to be the sharp method or something. Like a sharpie. No. <laughs> like a sharpie. <laughs> We're just going to draw no, no. dentin in there. Because <laughs> after all, your, your name is spelled almost like sharpie, right? <laughs> uh, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> no, I think redent's a bit more catchy and more accurate. I think you're right, too. <laughs> all right. Well, hey, Professor, I thank you so much for your time. I probably will reach out to you again. And hey, if you have something, reach out to me. I would love to have any new information that happens along this uh, journey, okay? Okay, will do. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Same here. And I know, uh, I know. No, I've, I've run you late, so I apologize for messing up your schedule. <laughs> you have a, great, okay. have a great day, okay? Yeah, you too. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, I don't know if you realize it, but England is five hours ahead of us. So it would be one o'clock in the afternoon there now. And um, he had some things that he needed to do. So isn't this cool stuff? Now, it is going to be a while. He hasn't even started the human trials yet. 
but uh, it looks like they are coming. And so uh, pretty soon, I'm hoping in the next, five, I don't know, five, ten years, a uh, dentist will be able to apply this material, and it'll grow the dentin back. Remember, it's not going to eliminate uh, dentists. It's not going to eliminate needles. It's not going to eliminate uh, drilling. But it's going to mean you'll be able to f have your own dentin in your tooth instead of a filling of any kind that we might do. All right, I think that's all the time we have. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Dr. Kavitko and visit my office Facebook page, which is Dr. Kavitko and Associates, and like us, please. Remember that all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. This is Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to TheReasonsWeSmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588. 9588 or send an email to speaking at the reasons we smile.com.